So what happens if you have a new diffuser technology and you have a description of the surface microstructure, but you don't actually have samples yet? What would you do? Well, one thing we can do now is we can use a finite difference time domain code FDTD solutions by Lumerical solutions and couple the far field scattering characteristics derived from a rigorous electromagnetic model into ASAP as incoherent scatter models. So let's take a look at the Lumerical desktop and this is an assembly of randomized ellipsoids on the surface of a dielectric. So these are embedded ellipsoids in the surface of a dielectric. And that shows you the result. We're simulating that geometry, and this geometry would be meshed out and a simulation done. And we would take the near field complex electromagnetic field, project it to the far field, and turn that into one bidirectional scattering distribution function. The randomization means that if we do this many times, the statistics will improve and we'll actually get a function that represents the result if we had an extensive surface, a macroscopic surface, with these kinds of characteristics. Now if we take a look at what would result in ASAP, I have a script where I actually load the result in from the numerical simulation. To give you an idea of what that result is, let's just take a look. Lumerical actually wrote my raw data functions, or raw data models, which will be used to generate a BSDF function for ASAP. And now I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to run an ASAP model where we scatter rays off of that and take a look at the output result. we will create a 2D and a 1D slice of that distribution through the, the plane of incidence. And those will give us a good idea of how well we have transferred data from the Lumerical application to ASAP. So now we see a two-dimensional result of the plotting of the scatter field. We see a plot of the model as imported, and what that means is this is exactly what Lumerical sent us, and this is the actual measured scatter data as the result of tracing rays. So the direct comparison is that this is a 30 degree angle of incidence plot of the actual scatter and this is a plot of the model. So let's turn off the zero degree incidence and sort of flip back and forth between the two and we see the extent to which those two data sets mimic each other or basically how well does the real reflected scatter signal follow the model that we fed it to create the scatter. This plot is a direct output or a direct result of the numerical far field projection of the near field coherent vector data. The bottom line, I think, is that these compare very closely uh, and this is a useful result. And in terms of the two-dimensional scatter field, we see something that shows how this works not only in the plane of incidence, but out of the plane of incidence.